Okay, we are live. It is five o'clock p.m. Eastern time on these these United States, and I've got Jeff Booth, and he is the author of a book, The Price of Tomorrow, and I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Uh, you can get that book on uh, Amazon, and I I highly recommend you do that. I'm put that up full screen there, so you can take a look. It's it's available on Amazon, and you can listen to the audio book version as well. So. Um, do do enjoy that book. I'm also going to show his uh, website real quick. Uh, this is uh, jeffbooth.ca. Don't go to. There's one that's a .com. That's not the real Jeff Booth. So make sure that you go to uh, to this website to check him out. And he has just got some amazing content. I'll also while we're here, I'll throw up his Twitter. There's his Twitter. You can follow him on on Twitter as well and uh well well worth the follow so hey craig great great to meet you great to see you be here Greg, you there? Oh, so I removed myself from the stream. Okay. <laughs> I figured that might okay, happen. Okay, so, yeah. so yeah, so Jeff, what I want you to do is just give a quick overview of the book. And I know you mentioned a little bit about Bitcoin in the book. I think it was a paragraph or two. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and how the book came about and then your journey into Bitcoin and then make any key points that you want to about Bitcoin from a 10,000 foot view. Sure. Um, the book came about uh, because I, I've been a technology entrepreneur uh, most of my life, um, and and I couldn't s uh, square the peg that technology was deflationary. Uh, that 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 technology that the, the things we were building that we called a technology um, were supposed to make our lives better by reducing prices. Um, I tell a story often about my first software business. Uh, the software took about two and a half years, three th over three years actually to build, and it cost almost five million dollars to build. And then ten years later, that software was uh, was free, and it was much better than the software we built. Um, and and if technology was a base la layer in everything. It, it was there's technology and energy production distribution as well. There's technology everywhere, um, and it was moving at that rate. Um, why was it that prices were going up? Um, and so I, I, through the book, I investigated what that looked like um, and realized that uh, that over the preceding twenty years, uh, <clears throat> that uh, that debt had risen by one hundred and eighty five trillion dollars to to increase gdp by 46 trillion dollars that doesn't sound very sustainable um but the reason why that was happening is technology was trying to drive prices down and and the response from from governments to because that would make the entire credit system that we lived in collapse the response was go from governments was to essentially debase currencies um and that and that take would divide society and and it would get worse and worse um, because most people wouldn't see the root cause of it all which was technology trying to save you time make your life uh, better against uh, against a system that we lived in trying to make prices rise just by manipulation so that's what um, I wrote about in the book um, I had bought Bitcoin my journey to Bitcoin uh, uh, prior to that so uh, some of my some of my technology uh, developers um, in in one of my businesses kind of brought Bitcoin to me with 2010 2011 and and I wish I had taken it seriously but I was too busy running my business um, and and so the first time I bought it was in 2017 but but I, the book was not a Bitcoin book the book was um, we are living in a world that's going through a phase transition. And what could solve that phase transition? What would that look like um, in that phase transition? So that's what I explained in the book. And then as I was writing the book, I became more and more convinced on Bitcoin was was a piece of that or, it, or, or a piece of uh, allowing that essentially society to move from one system to another. 
and I got more and more convinced. But even at, even in the book, there's one paragraph on Bitcoin, and it's it's a plausible um, uh, path. And and then since the book, and that was written in 2019, um, and it's predicted all of the other events that we see see around us uh, with pretty decent accuracy. Um, and uh, and uh, then then I got deeper on Bitcoin, and, and I realized that I, effectively I was trying to disprove my hypothesis and disprove that Bitcoin could be a, a solution. And buying by doing that, I. I, I couldn't, and I kept, uh, and it kept reinforcing, and I got more and more. So I was, uh, I, I would say, I was trying to say what what ways could Bitcoin be killed, and it got stronger and more decentralized, more secure, all the while, and it was measuring accurately the world that I expected to see, and so I, and and that still is happening today. So that's what, uh, that's my journey to it. So when you say that you got into it in 2017, was that during the big run up in 2017 or was that prior to that or? Yeah, it was, it was, it was probably just prior, prior to early in that run up. Um, okay. But, but again, I didn't buy much. It was a token just to see what was going on and I didn't really come back to it until I needed to understand. Uh, and, and this is probably similar to businesses that I run into uh, as well. I need to understand the root of the problem that I'm solving that I'm solving for at a first principles level, and then construct how to how to solve that. So for for me, my my path was okay. We would it would be normal that we would measure a system by the system, mm -hmm. um, and we were living in that system, measuring everything by that manipulated money, and and what would that look like as as society went on doing that. Um, and and and, uh, and 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 divided society, and then what could be a what could be a solve for that? Um, and there's obviously yeah, no, many no, many no, different no, solves. There's I've, many potential I've, different I've, solves. I've heard you talk about this. It's like the fish is in the water, and he doesn't know anything about the water, right? Because yeah, it's just there. So um, Lance is in the house. He says hello. Uh, Kyle says hello. A uh, bunch of folks saying hello. Durr's in the house. He, he's one I've been trying to get to sell some of his Rolexes and buy, buy more uh, Bitcoin. He bought some, I think. So, yeah, the first time that I talked about Bitcoin publicly was in early 2017 when my dad interviewed Adam Meister. I don't know if you've heard of him, Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister yep. on Twitter. And so he came here and, and my dad, who was 90 years old at the time, did an, uh, an interview with him. It's on YouTube. I think it has about 150,000 views. And it was interesting because I had gotten my dad into, into Bitcoin prior to that. And then he was starting to get more excited about it. I think it was up at about $2,500. So it started a little bit of that run up, right? And so he was getting more excited about it. And it was interesting that a 90-year-old was looking long-term, his whole conversation with, with Adam Meister was about how, what this thing is going to do long term. And I make jokes with people on Twitter sometimes, these young guys on Twitter, right? That they're, they're not thinking long term. And my dad, who was 90 at the time, was. Uh, unfortunately, he did pass away a couple of years ago, um, but he still had a strong hand uh, right up until the end. So um, I, I think that, that this, this whole Bitcoin thing, I, I look at it from a standpoint of my first career, I was an appraiser. I was an automobile appraiser. I appraised a lot of antique and classic cars, and I was into that antique and classic car community and so forth. And so I was always looking at quality, looking, judging cars at, at shows and so forth. Was this re restoration done right? Was this done right? You know, the, the, the bolts ma match, et cetera. And one thing that I was thinking about with, with Bitcoin is – this can bring us back to an age when craftsmen and people really cared about the job that they're doing and they really put that that quality into it. I think under in the fiat standard, there's been, you know, we outsource a bunch of stuff to China. A lot of that stuff is kind of junk, to be quite frank. Um, do you do you see a situation where under a Bitcoin standard, we'll get back to craftsmen really caring about what they're doing and building things for the 
long haul, whether it be a building built the last hundreds of years or a wristwatch or a car, you name it. Where do you see this going? You, you talk about abundance. Is it also going to relate to quality? Yeah, absolutely. So here's a here's an interesting thing to to the Empire State Building was built in 13 months, start to uh, start to finish, complete. It was a pretty good building, right? The the uh, and you couldn't get you couldn't get permits in 13 months these days, right? The <laughs> the uh, you couldn't build you couldn't build a normal house in 13 months because of permitting and all the regulation and red tape that has actually been created because of. When you have dishonest money, if you just if you really simplify Bitcoin, and I don't know why all the consternation, what the consternation would be from people who hate it, because all you're actually talking about is an open, honest ledger. Mm -hmm. And so the people that are that are attacking it are saying, no, we should have a dishonest ledger. And if you just ask yourself, what would society look like? Because it's just a mirror back to us. If everybody was competing on a dishonest ledger, and the, and who would win? Like probably who would win is the the people who could rise up and, and steal the most. Who would win? And and it would it would incentivize corruption inside the system that people were looking through. And then and th then most of those people inside that system that was a base layer of essentially dishonest theft. Mm -hmm. um, that that they would make it stronger by thinking there was a fix of their person or that somebody else's person was bad, their person was good. Um, and they would keep on strengthening that system within it. And so that's what's happening. That's why you see actually so much corruption all over the world. That's why you see dictators uh, rising. That's why you see all of this. Because it presupposes, it's a crazy thing, it presupposes that the existing system is that essentially says this, human beings can't trade with each other it, mm -hmm. unless there's theft and money and and, yeah. it's, and it, it's ludicrous and nobody asked the question and they call it inflation but it's really theft and and bitcoin is really a communication system that can't it, be corrupted it's a it's a lot of things and and i think what ends up happening with bitcoin is it's so this topic is so broad and that's why they call it the rabbit hole is so deep and and you typically see Bitcoin not for what it is. You see it through typically through what you are, and what your what your view is. And some people come at it from a technology perspective. Some people come at it from a, 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 um, a, a energy perspective. Some people that, and and they kind of hang on the thing that they that the, 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 their thing is, but unwinding those preconceived notions from the system we grew up grew up and entrusted. It's really hard to like even when I just said that that I'm sure there's people listening to this right now who want to push it back, who say it's not theft and it's it's inflation and it's, and an economy has to run that way, because they've been so indoctrinated into the system, and then even when they get to the point that okay it is theft, I, I don't have a vote in it, I don't have any ability to cha uh, change that, and, and it's just political theater on top of that system that steals my time and wages right and sure. transfers them to somebody else even when they get there they, they a lot of times they say oh, okay well there's no fix it's just too big it's too and then they run apathy um into it and so like i said before i kind of focus on what is the problem at the root cause and then what is the solution um uh, to that and that's so that my my path into bitcoin it it tackles in the question you asked and, and you, your prism would be increasing qual uh, quality and and really increasing quality because you're trading with humans who actually want the the, the best for you <laughs> and they win as a result and you're getting rid of a lot of middlemen <laughs> exactly you're on a um you're you're on an honest ledger and so yeah. who who would win on an honest ledger the people who would win on an honest ledger are the people mm -hmm. who provide the most value not to mention all the bureaucrats that would be out of work that would have to get a real job and would have to become productive because they're not needed anymore. A lot of the bankers, a lot of the insurance guys, a lot of these people that are leeches on the system that all of a sudden under Bitcoin standard, I think they're going to have to get a real job and actually be productive. Yeah, so well, that lifts it, everybody it, up. It, it lifts everybody up and it lifts everybody up. This is something that's, uh, that I would say is 
is very confusing. My, like my work is confusing unless you're in the new system. And so, and, and because so many people measure Bitcoin by the price of Bitcoin from the old system sure. instead, of, instead of what's happening. But in economics, it's, there's a law of economic and economics that prices fall to the marginal cost of production, mm -hmm. no matter what, over a long enough time period. In a, if there's competition, right? If there's, if it's not a corrupt system. But, but again, here's what I, I, I'm getting at. There's always competition whether and that's why it's over a long enough uh, period. So if a if a government regulates or or says there's no competition allowed in my borders, that still happens. But it, the competition moves outside of the borders and then and and then attacks that industry. So so all the government is doing by doing that is essentially saying my people are going to suffer because the because the free market is not going to deliver them. Uh, uh, goods and value, we're going to artificially protect it. And they make the company eventually fail or industry fail because that competition still goes on all over the world. And so, sure. so if you just look at your calculator app on, on your phone, it's just a good illustrative example, right? We used to pay for calculators. Um, we used to pay several hundred dollars for a good calculator. It, exactly. Day. And now, and now they're they're free. And why are they free? Because all over the world, if somebody I, I run a venture capital company, if somebody said I, I I want you to fund my business to create an X calculator app, I would laugh them out of the room, um, it because be, uh, because they're already free. And that's what happens. The entrepreneurs attack these things. And when it's a line of code, and think about where AI is going, and we think about the merging of AI and machines, when something is a line of code, um, it drops to drops to free. And, sure. and so you have, so if you just kind of follow that lo logic, you have uh, prices fall to the marginal cost of production. That's an economic law. You tick that tick the box. Number two, we have exponentially increasing productivity, tick the box, and you can see it all around you. Um, and then people go to fear typically, and they say, oh my God, my job's going to be, uh, go, where do I get a job? I need to get, make the government bigger to protect me. <laughs> and and so but if they the government's went, here to help exactly but if they went to three instead the the most important thing then then if what i said in one and two is true and it is true then the only thing that would measure that accurately would be something that would be fixed in supply so so, okay, bitcoin, so, so bitcoin isn't going up in value all things relative to bitcoin are falling in price and they will forever that's the, and I, I hear people say that, but here's how I'll push back on on Bitcoin's not going up in value. Only two percent of maybe the people really have a clue about Bitcoin, so it's still in the adoption phase. So the value is going to go up based on the adoption. This is just a discovery thing, right? I get, so, 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 so look at it a different way. And so it will, you'll think that because you're measuring prices through the existing system and it'll look like that for you. If you're measuring in Bitcoin, five years ago, my house would have, uh, my house would have cost a hundred Bitcoin mm -hmm. this year, this year it costs five, uh, seven. Okay seven Bitcoin uh, or something. But like that. isn't that because of adoption, because it's continuing to be adopted and, and therefore it, more demand, more demand supplies it, fixed. It, it, it's so you have two lenses viewing the world, one with fixed, fixed uh, uh, cap that can't be manipulated mm -hmm. and one with unlimited cap that is manipulated. So the denominator is changing in the other one really sure fun. sure I, I get that and, and but, so, so so the world's the, the world's wealth right now is a fixed number mm -hmm. right? yes and 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 what i'm talking about in in the productivity gains that sh should be delivered through society to society um through lower prices there's no taxes for my calculator app anymore there's no taxes for okay. the photo but so, jeff let me let me phrase it this way yeah. okay okay Let's say that everybody already knew about Bitcoin yeah. and everybody's already adopted. Everybody's fully educated about Bitcoin. Yeah. Then going forward, we will still live in a deflationary situation because productivity is always increasing and people are smart and they're figuring out better ways of doing things. 
But the argument that I would make is that the relative value of Bitcoin, the purchasing power of Bitcoin, whatever way you want to phrase that, is going up faster because now people don't know about it. So as more and more people are discovering it, it's going up faster relative to anything else because it's still in the discovery phase. It's still so, in the growth phase of the network. But it, it, it's a it's a pricing mechanism of everything else. So it's not it's not it's not a stock. It's mm -hmm. not something else. And when and and what you're uh, what you're what you're doing by 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 doing that, you're saying it's it's comparative to everything instead of pricing everything. So it's literally pricing everything. And, and that means that means all things, even right now, will fall at a really fast rate according to Bitcoin. Um, and 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 so you, you could say like if you wanted to dominate it the way you're doing it, you could you could actually say, say okay, well, it's going up in price. But what you're doing by doing that is actually is is reinforcing the a fiat mindset. And that fiat mindset is listen, the the, the fiat world we live in is 10,000 times bigger than Bitcoin today. Mm -hmm. So if, if and and so you'll see people worried about Bitcoin price as it, as liquidity is draining or or being added to this existing system and that lag time and everything else, because all prices of every single thing are manipulated to such an extent from this fiat system that they take that knowledge into Bitcoin and they think it's going up and down and and, and that that volatility as well. What I'm saying is, if you measure in Bitcoin. Um, and you zoom out, the only thing that could measure the world that I've, I'm talking about, that productivity, sh productivity increases should flow to society, is something that, that was fixed cap, that, that stayed decentralized and secure, and you couldn't kill it. And mm -hmm. so I spent, after I did all this work, I spent a lot of time saying, how would I kill this? How would, if, mm -hmm. if my thesis is right, if it's correct, and I sh then I should see every year, I should see the way I view it, I should say, see increasing purchasing power in Bitcoin or prices falling relative to Bitcoin. Correct. And I should see it, and I should see it forever. Correct. Um, I don't have to wait till hyper-Bitcoinization to see it. I can live in that world right now. And I don't have to, I don't have my wage and I don't have my wages being destroyed in real again to pay back 400 trillion dollars of insolvent debt to pretend all the other yeah. prices exist you, you you made a very good point there this is all predicated on it can't be stopped yeah and when i first learned about bitcoin it was like 2012 and my first reaction was this thing's gonna, gonna they're gonna kill it the government are, they're not stupid they're not gonna let this thing survive so then it was like a year later. And by the way, it was a friend of mine from Canada that introduced me to it, to Bitcoin. Uh, he was a very good tennis player. I, I went her down in Florida and we played tennis every season. And he was 82 years old at the time. And he was watching Max on Russia Today. Yeah. <laughs> and he got orange pilled. And then he finally did orange pill me. I finally bought my first Bitcoin in late 2013. And then I ran into... Uh, um, uh, Adam Max Meister we'll go with Matt. And, oh, yeah. and he was the one that convinced me not to try to time the market I was trying to like I saw how volatile it was and I said hey I'm going to try to time the market <laughs> and he he said no just buy and hold and my life has been much simpler since then so that was about late 2013 when, when he convinced me to just buy and hold and so the, the, the way I see this whole thing is at this point it's too late for them to kill it. At this point, you've got high net worth individuals buying it. You've got publicly traded companies buying it. You've got elected officials owning it. Uh, you, the game theory, it looks like it's too entrenched. And even if they wanted to kill it, I don't think they can. And for the reasons I just mentioned, a lot of them don't want to kill it because they're already <laughs> owners of Bitcoin. So how do you see the status right now do you what odds do you give that 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 the powers that be could kill this thing? They can't. Like I so, so my probability, I I, uh, I had a five percent probability of an eventual failure when mm -hmm. I started looking at Bitcoin and through through work trying to uh, uh, trying to see where I was wrong, trying to disprove this. 
I, sure. that my, what I would say is my probability of failure at some point, it, it would have to be an unknown unknown, right? To be able to, that I can't, uh, I can't do because, and, but my probability is now kind of 0.1 or, uh, or less than 0.1%. And now I see, and now by investing on top of that ecosystem, and I see the the adoption rate of what's happening, it's it's going to be the new peer to peer internet. Um, and there's so it, you go through some of the attack vectors of they would kill it. What what you're actually saying when you when you say that is because there is no they; it's just us, mm -hmm. right? So what you're saying is I'm going to grant control over over my individual sovereignty to some unknown people that some so that, that i'm too fearful <laughs> to move yeah. forward that's what you're, you're saying because this is an open network and and the more people that join it it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and you can see it every year if you look at the decent how decentralized it is how secure it is it gets stronger and more decentralized and secure every year um, and it's too, like you said, it's too late. So let's say, let's say even if enough governments came together and said, we're going to, we're going to ban it, we're going to regulate it and then, and then kill it. We're going to turn it into, uh, um, we're going to rehypothesize. Yeah, gonna, exactly. Yeah. So you would, what would happen? Cause uh, I was just an Oslo freedom forum. I can see how fast this is growing in, in Latin America and in, in, in places that need this desperately. Mm -hmm. living it with dictators and and what they're what these people are dealing with and in africa and how fast this is growing in these places places um the bitcoin mining is being used to 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 electrify villages in africa because you get free energy and so it's decentralizing everywhere when china said we're we're, we're going to kill this we're going to stop this all it did is accelerated the network and still 10 percent over 10 percent of the mining capacity is still in china they can't find it so it's it's yeah. it, 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 I'm gonna it, it, I'm gonna show you uh, something. Uh, uh, Michael Saylor just announced today. So if I can put this up here, uh, they just bought another. Let's see here. Um, they bought another twelve thousand Bitcoin. They now hold one hundred and fifty-two thousand Bitcoin at an average price of twenty-nine thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars. So this is this is what I'm saying is. Whoops, I removed myself again. OK, <laughs> we have a publicly traded company that is continuing to double down and buy more and more Bitcoin. His stock has performed amazingly well the last couple of years. His, his, he's it's, turned it's, his whole, it's, it, yeah, it's up 10 times. His it's whole a, company has has. I mean, you know, he's just it's amazing. And so. Yeah, I, I think that and and the way I look at and people say Bitcoin is not an investment. I'm sorry. I've got a lot of money, work, <laughs> effort, time, whatever you want to call it in Bitcoin. So I see that as a store of my value. Yep. I see that as an investment per se. I'm, I've invested my time and effort in getting that Bitcoin and, and putting it in cold storage. So anyway, you can use whatever term you want, but it's a significant amount of, of my net worth that I have in, in Bitcoin. So the way I look at it is every day that I leave that in Bitcoin, I'm re-upping. I'm continuing my conviction yep. that this thing is for real and that this thing isn't going to get stopped. Yep. And so and, and what's funny is people that say that they're too late to this thing that, you know, oh, I should have bought it five years ago or eight years ago or whatever. Here we've got somebody, Michael Saylor, buying it right now. Yeah, you've got a whole uh, bunch it, of it, serious, it, it, really smart people buying Bitcoin right now. So obviously, and with only two percent or so, how many people, percentage-wise, on in this globe, how many people do you think really are aware of Bitcoin? What percentage would you say? Yeah, so uh, aware or or. Or, or we really know we're, well at least know the basics that there's 21 million that you can self custody at the it, basics it, less than two percent okay so we've got 98 percent we of actually probably have we, we, we probably have more than that where it's probably like 90 because how many people really know what's happening that it's transitioning it's not being priced by this system it's transitioning it's going to steal the entire economic energy of 900 trillion dollars divided by 20, 21 million 
That's what it, yeah. it does. It doesn't matter if you get there through inflation or deflation. It's a ledger that cannot be moved. And so the, because because of because of that, it, the 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 uh, the other the make believe world that thinks you can get richer by just printing more pieces of paper is yeah. going to be, is being repriced is what is what's happening and everybody sitting in if if you believe in that world that is not tied to physics it's tied to a, a belief system that somebody has power over you that can that is allowed to make up more units of money that make believe uh, world is going to look really painful for you because you're going it's going to collapse and it's going to you're going to see things in the world that you can already see them there's signposts everywhere and all of the collisions all of the divide that you're seeing social media and elsewhere it's because you're measuring through a make-believe world not tied not anchored to reality this is this is tied to physics it's tied to energy it's tied to uh to physics is proof of work that's what proof of work is and it's and it's immovable it's not movable so so that's it's re it's literally repricing that system and you have a choice every every single person has a choice of going over then selling and going back to the make-believe system they have a lot of people do that they 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 accumulate some bitcoin it goes up and then they sell everything to buy something else that is uh but and and so it distributes bitcoin distributes over and over again through that process but it's going to be a long process that this is the first time that humans have had the ability to actually own something in true self-custody that can't be easily confiscated. Okay, if you think about it, anything else that you would hold, gold, bullion that you bury in your backyard, they can come with metal detectors and they can get it. You know, cash that you have under your mattress, they can obviously come and get it, right? Bitcoin, we can actually memorize 24 words, 12 words, or put those words somewhere where they can't find them. And you, you, you've got your Bitcoin. And there's nothing they can do about that. You can get on a plane. You can get somebody to read you your your uh, three three different word combinations, and you could have it anywhere in the world. There's nothing um, exactly. There's it, nothing that and that's never them. been available before. So we so so that's an important po- point that um it and I think it's connected to this. And people, if you wanted to read on my website, I wrote an article called "Finding Signal in a Noisy World." essentially talking what the world would look like through because all the money is is information you don't actually want more information or so you don't want more money you want you want the carrying capacity of what you think the money is and what it will buy you in terms of things you can describe and so uh so uh so when you have misinformation and money as a byproduct you have to have misinformation everywhere so if you allow misinformation and money and that's why bitcoin it's just pure it's a uh, it uh, it doesn't allow that misinformation in it, uh, it. It's yeah. It's it's a it is a communication system that cannot be tampered with. Yeah. So I can send a message from me to you that happens to be a Bitcoin transaction, but it's basically a message that I'm turning over access to that Bitcoin to you. Yeah. And then from then on, you've got access to it until you s- sent send that permission, basically. The Bitcoin doesn't move, right? It's 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 on all the ledgers. But all I'm basically doing is I'm giving you access to my Bitcoin. Yeah. Now, but again, but, but again, what I find what I find in in this is it depends where people are on their journey. And most people, if 99% of the people are, don't understand kind of our existing system, the plumbing in our existing system, nor do they understand Bitcoin, then going to what it is in your view of what it is and what my view is, so when you've spent eight years or nine years understanding this protocol, it's a lot of times it's a bridge too far to bring people there. So that's why that's why I talk about kind of if you said an information system or and and I reinforce what you said before. Humanity is always throughout time has to ha, had to trust um, a, an institution because we couldn't have decentralization and security together. And so the institution, the Magna Carta or the Constitution or the uh, were, were were essentially enshrining in law individual rights and freedoms. And by doing that, where you did that, because the free market is more productive than a centralized market, where you did that, those markets outperformed because people, because all of the ideas could 
it could it could move faster. And what ends up happening over time, because money is more powerful than uh, money is more powerful than an institution, the institution eventually gets corrupted, and they and 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 laws don't do not protect you from the institution getting uh, corrupted. They protect the people with the money creating the laws, and so. Yeah. So, so that's why if, and that's what, for me, when going through this, if there was a first time in human history that had ever seen something like this, that could have decentralization and security to dig together. And if that couldn't be hacked and if that couldn't be, then that would be a big deal because it would rewrite everything in the future. And, yeah. and we wouldn't have it. We wouldn't have a model to even look at it because we were looking through all of our history books had corruption and 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 wars and resets inside them because of what i just described and so th that new model it, and again you could say if that was true if it actually could create decentralization and security together that you didn't need the institution for trust you could trust each other because of uh, because of this it would rewrite everything and so that uh, so and 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 for me, that's that. That was one of the things that I said. Huh, wow, <laughs> that means a lot of my previous reading, right? A lot of the things that I used to look at, and whether it was communism, capitalism, uh, all of the different ideas of how to wire or society. And it, remember, the winners write the history books. Sure. Right? <laughs> so, so, and you lose part of history that didn't that, that didn't win and so all of these things not that they're all wrong but there must be some level of error in a lot of the past and that's moving to something that looks very different in the future it's super exciting oh we we live in amazing times with with bitcoin okay so let's talk about a couple of things real quick um and then i know i know you've got to go but um i i mentioned to you when you came in just before the show started uh James Cameron uh, had a partnership with Rolex and they built a, a, a deep sea uh, submersible. And the reason I started digging into this is there was that tragedy a couple of weeks ago or, you know, where the, the one imploded. Yeah. Um, it really wasn't designed properly. And so it imploded on the way down. Um, I started looking into those things and the one that uh, James Cameron had made was just for him. It was a one seater and it had a steel sphere that, that he it was sitting in pressure hull. Um, and then there's another gentleman who had one made. And by the way, the, the one that Cameron had made had a Rolex strapped to one of the uh, arms, one of the robotic arms. And when he went down to the deepest part of the Mariana trench, the, the Rolex was still ticking it, it, it survived. And so Rolex was one of the sponsors of that, that deep dive. And then there was another submersible built. And by the way, for anybody watching, the links are in the description to the, the documentaries on both of these are really interesting. There was another one built by a gentleman that seated two people and he had a titanium hull made. And super strong, made out of grade five titanium. And I'll show real quick my, uh, let's see if I can bring up the, uh, yeah, there's a Rolex there that's uh, grade five, not Rolex, Grand Seiko, that's grade five uh, titanium. And so the reason I bring this up is I was researching, you know, why did this other one fail? And I saw a lot of information about it. And it seemed like there were corners cut. I mean, a lot of the experts were saying there's just this isn't the way to do it. This isn't how you you build it. Right. First of all, the pressure chamber should be a sphere because then the pressure is equal all the way around. It's much stronger than a tube yeah. that, you know, if you think about a tube, if you push on the sides of the tube, it can crush easier than if it was round, if it was a sphere. Right. All the all the forces are are distributed around it. So anyway, long story short. This guy built this this unit and he's had numerous dives. It's it's designed to do multiple dives, not just a, a one off. And it's been very successful. He's he's used it all around the globe. No issues whatsoever. And so now we're going back to that discussion of of quality and people really taking their time with with things that they build and and whether it be a building, you know, a car, you know, whatever. 
I, I want to reiterate that I really think one of the real benefits of a Bitcoin standard is we're going to get back to old world craftsmanship and doing things right and taking the time to dot the I's and cross the T, not moving fast and breaking things like Silicon Valley <laughs> likes to say they do, right? Let's take a little more time and do it right. Uh, do you think that's going to be a, a, a spinoff benefit of a Bitcoin standard? In time, yes, but but again, the free market values like your value, and people will make choices that they think are um, are reasonable choices, only to get burned by that choice on the way down, right? So, and so both it will exist, but in the end, um, it'll 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 drive more value because because the winners, people providing the most value will will survive and when and, and that's a, just a really important connection right and, and and what i would say is this is where this gets confusing for people in my, my book if everything in your life kept on falling in price energy was cheaper mm -hmm. uh, it, towards free if food was free if all of these things were free because it, and, and moving towards free even if they were uh, today's notion dollars and pennies mm -hmm. right um and they were moving to that, then within the way you're looking at Bitcoin, it has infinite value is what ends up happening. But you parting with that is you're going to want to part it for something that brings you real value against Correct. That, right. And so that's the, that's the system that this, uh, this, uh, so by, by delivering value to society, the output of this is you win a little bit while you're providing value. The, the, instead of the rent seekers extracting value, yep. you win, and the output of your work keeps the prices coming down for everybody else, and society wins. And then you go I, find, I, yeah. I, I think our spending habits change completely. Since I've started stacking Bitcoin, I am much more hesitant to just willy nilly buy something. I mean, I I I measure seven times and cut once. I mean, I I it it. Because I, I'm sitting on the Bitcoin and I know that that's going to be really hard to come by years from now. This is, that's my opinion. And so the last thing I want to do is, is give that up. And when I get extra fiat, I'm plowing it into Bitcoin, even though I really don't need any more Bitcoin. I really don't. Um, I mean, you know, but I, I'm doing it anyway, just because I, 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 I don't. I, yeah. I, I, I just don't know where else I would I would put the money. And w when when we were on the old fiat standard, you wanted to spend the money because you knew the money was depreciating, uh, losing purchasing power. So you're yeah. not going to sit on the, the money. You're going to either buy some stocks or buy a car or buy a house. I mean, that but I've totally pivoted from that to where I don't want to spend the Bitcoin on anything. I want to just hold it. Yeah, and 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 uh, I, uh, so I think each person in their time. I think right now you're doing that, um, and as the, the time. But what the what the market is supposed to do is measure measure when you want something worse, when you have an itch, uh, itch that, that that you need to scratch. If I want a, it bad yeah, enough, yeah, if you want it bad enough, you pay yeah. for something. I know, I know. Each year, a TV gets bigger, nicer, and cheaper, mm -hmm. but. But I still don't. I don't wait for fifteen or twenty years to buy a TV. I know it's absolutely. Going to. You, there's so, certain things you you want and you and you you're going to have. I guess what I'm saying is the frivolous spending is really goes away. At least yeah, I, 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 it, it, it's it's almost incomprehensible how much spending goes away. But not just spending, the jobs to support the spending. The useless jobs, the useless bureaucratic jobs that are just designed. It's, think about the think about the uh, all of the money with financial regulation to protect you from losing your money <laughs> on top of a system designed to steal your money. The, the accountants, <laughs> the IRS, the lawyers, get rid of all of them. But 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 again, it, it, that entire that entire system to be able to protect you in the name of protecting. Yeah, sits yeah. On top of a system designed to steal your money. We're we're here from the government. We're we're here to help you. And uh, got to give yeah. a shout out. Brief it dance had a uh, comment in here somewhere, and uh, she's she's the one that um, there. You could make a 
a argument backed up with data that Brianna, a.k.a. Brie Fit Dance, started the big bull run after Michael Saylor <laughs> bought his Bitcoin. Because let me tell you the timeline on that. Yeah, I, re I remember seeing it. <laughs> a bunch yeah. of people have shared the timeline. He bought the Bitcoin, and then the price was kind of level for almost a month. Didn't do much, right? And then she came out with her Bo 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 video, right, that went viral. Yeah, and all of a sudden, at that, the, within a day, the chart starts going like this, <laughs> and it went up to that sixty-nine thousand dollar high. Awesome. So, shout out to Brief Fit Dance for getting that big bull run going. Maybe I just in her in her question, uh, what kind of technology do you think is most effective? I'm just I'm I'm not sure what that means on the. Uh, I can say Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, she's probably asking what's going to be the most impactful um, going forward. As got, I, I'm guessing, that's what she's she means. Okay, so um, so this is why it's important to look at two uh, two different systems. So in my book, um, what I why I talked about the exponential technology coming, and I, I dedicated two two chapters to AI. What would would happen? Is I was measuring AI. It's exactly the same trend. And it's been exactly the same trend for 60 years. And I was measuring on the exponential logarithmic mm -hmm. trend. And mm -hmm. most people are surprised because they're not. They're measuring on the linear. Yeah. And so, so that exponential trend of technology where there's more laws, law, AI, that exponential of trend, uh, trend of technology, if you wonder where it's going to go next, you wouldn't be surprised with ChatGPT when it came out. You wouldn't be surprised at all because you'd know that and you'd know the next step and you'd know the next step if you're measuring exponentially. And you'd know that if, if it took $185 trillion proceeding to, to, create, to create $46 trillion of economic growth, then against that type of deflation, then it has to create ungodly distortions of money to be able to pretend it's solvent. And then you ask yeah. yourself, and so so that's the trend I'm talking about because they're two polar opposite things. What 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 I think she asked then is, then what types of things, all of those types of things, driven by that trend of technology, artificial intelligence that's smarter than us eventually, merged with machines, every type of machine. Um, I have a friend of mine that's actually already has artificial intelligent machines that don't just do a task at a store. They do all store tasks. They unload the truck. They load the shelves. They they do the cashier work. They run the store. Now it's right now it's it's expensive. It's probably a hundred dollars an hour, but these are on in stores right now, and you just run the store, and it learns better than humans how to how, uh, how to run the store. He thinks in three years the cost of that labor because now you've automated not that just the digital part with AI. You've uh, you've connected it to the physical part with machines, and if you if you wonder how much that is in in the U.S. economy, it's a ten trillion dollar market. So, but he thinks in three years he'll be at five dollars an hour labor. So, ask anybody. So, uh, what will happen right now is people go go. Oh my God, we need to tax the robots to keep this charade of making money <laughs> to making money, and we need to. The government needs to control this because, and what, because what they're really fearful of, what they don't, and they're not saying is, where's my job going to be? How am I going to feed? Yeah, my family? I want but, control. They want yeah, control, but what? And they but, can't control this. But but again, so that's one axis, and that's happening, and it's going to continue, and it's going to, and because it's moving exponentially, it's actually not moving faster. It's moving at the same rate, but because those steps are now way bigger, they're going to, they're going to they're going to blow people's minds on what's coming next completely blow blow people's minds so that the it, what ends up happening is the last 60 years of growth everything that we see beside us in about two years doubles right? yeah you, and, you know jeff the reason i know where bitcoin's going and and i can see it is back in the in the late 60s I was watching the detective shows, you know, Mannix, Cannon and all that. You're too young to remember these. But anyway, they had all these detective shows on TV and all these guys had phones in their car, right? A wired phone in their car yeah. with the, the old Motorola trunking system in the, in the trunk and all that. And then in the mid 70s, around 74, 75, 
a friend of my father, he was an aerospace engineer, and the friend of my father worked for Motorola. He went to Australia, and they built the first cellular system and started testing it there because they wanted to do it pro so nobody knew what they were doing. And so they figured it out, and then they deployed a test in the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area, and they had 150 of the handheld cell phones, like the one in Wall Street, the movie Wall Street. They had 150 of those phones in this test that started in 1980, late 1980. And I was able to get one of those phones for the test. And it went on for a couple of years. And so I had this phone, this handheld phone that I could go anywhere, go into a bar or whatever. I could make a phone call. And it, was, it blew everybody's mind that saw that phone. Because they'd never, you didn't even have cordless phones in houses then, yeah. okay? And so I saw how everybody reacted to that. I could even get into concerts and stuff, right? I went to the Fleetwood Mac concert. I was able to get like backstage because I just had this phone, right? It looked like I was like an FBI guy or something. I don't know what they assumed, right? I could pretty much just walk wherever I went. That was the impact of technology. And now, many years later, look where the cell phone has gone. From 1980, you know, and then all of a sudden you get the iPhone, you get all the technology with that, you get all the, uh, you know, so, so this is where we're going with this Bitcoin thing. But it's, again, it's but, the but, same but this, thing. But, but this is the thing that needs to be, uh, this, these are almost different forces. They're, they're different for, so the technology that I'm talking about here is meaning the only way that productivity, the, the, those productivities gains will accrue to you is if you hold Bitcoin. Otherwise, the productivity gains on a distorted monetary system will be stolen from you. To make to uh, so that's the that's why it's so important. It's so important because the it, to to effectively, if you could control money, you control the world. Mm -hmm. And so this is money that you can't control. So it forces. There is nobody on this podcast uh, that that would go to if a government said to them, "Hey." Our entire credit uh, system is broken. The entire thing is uh, $400 trillion of debt is already insolvent. But don't worry. Every year your wages are going to go down, but you'll get more for less. Versus another another politician saying, don't worry, I'll solve your problem and I'll make you, give you more by debasing currency and then stealing it from your other pocket. Right? It, like, you're going to believe the person that's going to give you a short-term gain. And in the in our entire society is is wired that way. If it wasn't in Argentina, um, where there's a hundred and fourteen percent inflation rate, or Turkey, or Lebanon, or Venezuela, where there's crazy inflation rates, all of those people would already be Bitcoiners. But they're not, and they're not because they believe in the government's ability to save this. And then they get rug pulled, and they get all their labor, their wages stolen, and then they do it again and again and again. So this is going to take a while, but I will just say it really clearly. If Bitcoin, the decentralization and security holds, which I can't see a way that it can't, so I think it will hold, uh, uh, will hold as more people do this, then all of the productivity gains, all of them, from every single thing that humans invent from here on in, in accrue to you through that network. If you're not in that network, they're taken from you. Oh, yeah. It's going to flow it, from the fiat system yeah. into the Bitcoin system. So, okay. So before we wrap up, we need to address the, the elephant in the room. We got a bunch of guys here in the chat that I know have multiple Rolex watches. Some <laughs> of them have bought the watches as, quote, investments. Uh, stores of value. It has been a good play. If you were able to buy some Rolexes three or four years ago uh, from the authorized dealer at list price, some of those watches are worth two or three times the list price on the on the gray market because people can't go in and buy one. There, there, yeah. there's a, there was a shortage of the watches. And then, of course, there's a lot of hype on the, all the social media. And so that bubble keeps blowing up and blowing up. There has been a pullback here recently. The values on a lot of those models are getting softer and, and are pulling back some significantly. Um, I've been trying to tell these guys for years, hey, take, take that money and put it in uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Keep one, maybe two nice watches, <laughs> sell all the, all the surplus ones and, and put it in Bitcoin. Uh, and I know... No, nobody likes to give financial advice. I don't mind because I think it's good advice. Um, this is what I would do. I, I, they can do whatever they want. 
But what do you think these guys uh, should do? These guys that have a bunch of Rolexes, uh, what do you think? Should they sit on those or should they liquidate some of them? What would you do? I'll put it this way. If, if you were in their shoes. So, so I am in their shoes and everybody has an idea of where they think that the value is coming from. So I, I, and again, in first principles, um, we know for sure technology is advancing exponentially. You can look all around, you know, you can, you know that if technology is advancing exponentially and you have massive liquidity to be able to try to stop the prices from falling because the whole system would reset, then while there's more liquidity, Fed printing money, and they will have to, it's a, it's mathematical certainty. They will have to, how much money is going to be manipulated? You will blow, blow your mind. If you hold an asset like a Rolex watch in that, it will look like it's going up as well. Sure. It's not. It's the money go, being debased. And, and so, so it, and it will protect you uh, and a house will do the same thing. It'll look like it's going up in the, uh, in, in, in the currency that's being debased, but it's not, it's a, it's, it, it, and, and so, so I, I understand why people hold on to these because they think they're making so much money and they actually probably are versus the relative population because most be, if you're saved it in cash or wages, your wages are going down by that rate, rate. Your cash is going down by that rate. So it looks like it's going up against that. Um, <clears throat> Bitcoin is, it, in my uh, in my judge, it is a better store of value than any single other thing. You're part of a network that that cannot be changed. That uh, that 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 effectively, what I just said, all of the technology gains from here to eternity flow to you in the form of uh, uh, and, that amount and, of community. And isn't this a knowledge arbitrage play? Isn't this a thing where the people that get the knowledge about Bitcoin now and get involved now, that they've got a competitive advantage over the people that choose not to learn about Bitcoin? Yeah, if you, if, 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 totally. If you, if you just, if you ask, what would a what would something like this look like the, at this time at this time in the market? In fact, the people not understanding it, if it was an asymmetric bet, um, would be a feature, right? It would be it, because if everybody knew about it, it would already have uh, this this movie would have already happened. So that uh, that when you ask people and they don't understand it and they they misrepresent it and they think all these different things, it's telling you exactly that. It's telling you how early we, uh, we are. In fact, the entire chaos of the world. That's why I've just zoomed out from all of the chaos of all the other things that are that, that are happening because they're all a derivative of this, and the chaos is actually telling you how early you are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The, well, uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for for coming on. I really appreciate it. You 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 do so much for the community and and trying to educate people and help people out. Uh, any, any final words? And then after you leave, I'm going to show all your website and all that, all those good things again. Uh, but any, um, any, yeah, no, it, so, so there's a saying in, uh, Bitcoin, the number saying is in, in Bitcoin, not your keys, not your coin and use, uh, you've already said that. So people should learn how to self custody and cold storage and self, uh, self custody. It's really safe. It's secure. And they should uh, they they should do that. Be even before they do that, well, you could test it. You could put a small amount in. Even before that, don't don't trust verify. Um, so I, I I'm I'm saying a bunch of things uh, on this, and in it, it, it to me, there's nothing I've said here that isn't true, and I, that 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 I haven't done my work. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do your work. Um, and, and verify that what I said, uh, said is true, because if you're in a, in, in a world with all of this competing noise, it's, it's very easy to get deceived. And in fact, and, in, 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 in Bitcoin, that's actually why it's created. People will call it a cult. Well, if I'm in a cult with people with integrity and honesty and on an honest ledger, and that's the meaning of a cult, sign me up. Right. The <laughs> so there's no there's no grand poobah in it, charge it, it, that can change anything. Totally. Sign, there's no like, boss. Yeah. So, uh, then, then, then sign me up. And I think that's what happens once you start to understand this at the level that it uh, that it is and what it means for humanity. 
you start to and and you re, you see other people who have done that it it gives a benefit to honest actors it gives a benefit to value providers and that's why probably you're doing this podcast and the the the, 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 the and so many people are just giving back they're not paid to do this in, in many uh, cases they're just giving back to the community because it's an honest uh, an, an honest network and so you you meet other people that are living in that future already and mm -hmm. as you're meeting with those people and you're spending more time with those pe uh, people that are living in an honest future already and the repercussions and what that means for society it's a really powerful statement and you want to spend more time there well thank you that that can that can be the last word i, I really appreciate you coming on and um anybody that's not following him i'm going to show uh his pages and all that kind of good stuff again and then we'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about there in the chat uh thanks again for coming jeff you bet thanks Greg. <clears throat> jeff booth He's a big deal. A lot of people follow him on Twitter. And let me let me show that one here. Um, whoops, that's micro strategy. Let me pull up his Twitter. Um, there's his Twitter at Jeff Booth at Jeff Booth. And here is his website, jeffbooth.ca, jeffbooth.ca. And um, yeah, I mean. Things are getting interesting, folks. Bitcoin hovering around $30,000. Um, the halving is next spring. By all accounts, it looks like the bottom was in at $15,500 a few months back. A, a word of silence, a moment of silence for those that sold the bottom. And God bless them. But anyway, for those that had a strong hand and held, we're back up to around 30000 I think I predicted that the price would probably double the year before the halving. We talked about this previously. This is the year before the halving. And the price has almost doubled already. And we're, not, we're only halfway through the year. So if we close out this year at around 30000 or so, I think that's normal. And then the, um, the halving will be in the spring and then usually the big run-up happens after the halving uh so and usually it peaks about a year or so after the halving historically so i'm talking about the four-year cycles of bitcoin uh the halving cycle that happens every four years so like clockwork bitcoin's doing what it has done and I don't see any reason to believe it's not going to continue to do what it has done, in which case we'll see significantly higher prices of Bitcoin about a year and a half from now or so. Um, let's see. We should get him to play the guitar next time he comes to her. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, let's see. Derek's in the house. Has the show gone? What what show? We're still here. Um and somebody put gave a super chat. Are you aware of the SHA256? SHA256. Let me see if we can pull this up. Um, SHA256. Um, huh. It's not coming up on a search. Um, put the dash in there. Um, oh, no. Uh, the, the SHA, the way, the SHA 256 algorithm, is that what you were talking about? I thought you were talking about a model number for a, um, for a Grand Zeko watch. SHA-256, yeah, if you're talking about the um, the cryptography or whatever, yeah, that's robust stuff. Um, hooping, hooping feet picks. Um, let's see, Bitcoin, uh, let's see, Bitcoin is future going the way of 
Biden coin. <laughs> Biden is in deep, 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 you know what lately, isn't he? A lot of people saying they're smoking guns, but they've been saying there's been smoking guns for a while. Carlos, so you're in here. I haven't seen him. What about Fiat Chrysler? <laughs> there, there always has the um, lost spring bar. Bitcoin is manipulated as well. It's wash trade and pump with doesn't make any difference. There's still only 21 million Bitcoin will ever be produced. And if you self custody your Bitcoin, you don't have to worry about the shenanigans that other people are doing. Uh, they can do whatever they want. They can't uh, mess with your Bitcoin. That's the beauty of it. So, and like I say, historically, the purchasing power of Bitcoin has continued to go up and to the right. So I don't think you have to worry about uh, what those guys are doing. Um, what about Bitcoin? Um, <clears throat> Craig has 0.28 BTC rolling in the Satoshis. There you go. That, hey, that could make you wealthy someday if you have 0.28. Uh, great show, Kyle. Um, Kyle asked about Zello these days. Uh, not, I don't think anybody's using Zello anymore. Um, uh, let's see. Didn't think would address SHA Shaw 256, Sammy the bunny. Um, let's see here. Hoop, please. We don't have a hoop dancer here right now. Kyle, see you on Zello, Lost Spring Bar. Um, I'll be there. Okay. Um, yeah, well, we, we need Kyle to do a, uh, to do a live show and give us an update from the West coast. We can right here. Lost spring bar. <laughs> if this is who I think it is, I think he sold the bottom. <laughs> oh dear God. I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for people that sold near the bottom, but that's what happens. They capitulate some, here's what they do. Bitcoin takes a big downturn and it hits like, let's say $16,000, whatever, pick a number. And then they say, well, it's going to go a lot lower. I got an expert, an expert that says it's going to go down to 10,000, right? So it's at 16,000. So, so they say, what the hell? I'm just going to sell my Bitcoin and I'm going to buy it back at 10,000. And then it never goes to 10,000. And that's how these weekends end up losing their precious, precious Bitcoin. Um, let's see here. I think he's referring to the algorithm. Okay. Good point. I should have been keeping an eye on the chat better. Um, Brett says, how's it going, Craig? Going good. Um, by the way, I've been thinking about... Uh, I I set one Bitcoin aside. I bought a Bitcoin when it was about 17,000 or whatever. And I set it aside uh, separate from my main stack. And I said, okay, I'm going to hold this one until Bitcoin's 100,000. And then I'm going to buy that new uh, GMT master in yellow gold. So Brett... Can you confirm that the new GMT master, if you're still there, that the GMT master in yellow gold still has the ceramic sleeves in the uh, that Jubilee bracelet so it won't stretch? Um, I thought he was talking about a GS. Yeah, me too. Uh, Tim's in the house. Hi, all. Interesting guest in Japan. Grand Seiko Fair starts today. Uh, we'll report back. Cool. Um, okay. Brett's in the house. Jason needs a stronger hand. Um, yes, the algorithm. Yeah. Well, Sammy, the, um, I mean, the security of Bitcoin is robust. I don't think we have to worry about the security of Bitcoin at this point. Maybe Jason was involved in the voting accident with Craig and Carlos. Um, hopefully, hopefully he was just kidding around when he said he was selling all, all his Bitcoin. Now, he did say he was continuing to buy Bitcoin, which I don't understand that. I don't know. Why would you sell it out of one hand and then continue to buy in the other? Unless you're going to do a tax loss harvesting, that makes sense then. If you bought it high and then you sell it low, you can write off that loss and then buy the Bitcoin back. But um, other than that, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> what Bitcoin is built on built on 
Bitcoin is open source software that anybody can run and people choose to run it all around the world. And what gives it security is the miners, quote miners, they use a tremendous amount of electricity to try to win the next Bitcoin reward. Okay, that happens every 10 minutes, 6.25 Bitcoin. And it's a competition between all these miners. And it takes a tremendous amount of energy to do that. And so in order to try to attack Bitcoin and mess with it, you're going to have to generate a significant amount of energy that nobody can do. So that's a short way of saying that it is robust. It can't be messed with. Uh, can confirm, lost spring bar, can confirm what? That he lost his Bitcoin in a boating accident? Um, NASA created SHA-256. Um, he says, scares me. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about that because nobody's been able to break it. It's been many, many years and nobody's been able to break, break it. And by the way, Bitcoin is a tremendous honeypot. <laughs> so if anybody could figure out how to successfully attack Bitcoin, they would have done it. Right. Uh, so, and by the way, hackers are trying every day to attack Bitcoin. It's not uncommon for, for the best hackers in the world to try to attack Bitcoin. And they're all unsuccessful. Kyle in the house. I was thinking of Brett when reading Sammy say that about the NASA. One train leaving town, <laughs> you're on it or not. <laughs> Kyle has been a believer, I think, in Bitcoin for, for as long as I can remember. Uh, he's been steadfast. So, yeah, I think he'll be all right. <clears throat> it's my guess. Exactly. They have to demonetize into something else. Uh, that's BTC. Um, Law Spring Bar says, can confirm the GMT has the ceramic sleeves. Now, have you actually seen them or, or how are you confirming this? I know with Carlos, he actually sent me a photo of the ceramic sleeves that were in his day date because he had an extra link and he had a photo of the link. And, the, and I think it's on my, I'll pull it up here. Let me see. <clears throat> By the way, here's Michael Saylor and his day date, his platinum day date. That probably doesn't need sleeves. <laughs> platinum ain't going to wear, right? Um, so no, no sleeves needed there. Let me see if I can find this. Um, um, Carlos. It might have been, actually, it might have been Dudley that sent me that photo. Um now that I think about it, it might have been Dudley, because I think it was a yellow gold one. Um, I'm looking here. Just give me a minute. Uh, if I can find the photo, I'll show it. No, it's not there. I think it was Dudley. I might not be able to find it. Oh, here. Here we go. Yes. I'm, I need to be certified as a genius, folks. I need to be certified as a genius. There it is. See that white thing? That is the sleeve. That is the ceramic sleeve. So, that solves that issue. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Um, are we done with the Bitcoin talk? <laughs> Is everyone waking up now from that slumber? <laughs> We're trying to educate you guys, edumacate. We're trying to bring some signal, okay, to the situation. Uh, Kyle in the house, I believe this is the way they produce the current generation of Jubilee and present bracelets, so they all would have them. 
Yeah, but I don't want to believe it. I want to have it confirmed. I'll put it this way. I want to see a picture like the one I just showed. That's what I want. I want to see a picture. Okay, because otherwise I don't know if I buy it. So I, the way I figure it, um, Bitcoin will be about 100 grand a little over a year from now. And hopefully by then things will have died down a little bit as far as the, the Rolex is. And hopefully I'll be able to walk into an AD and just buy one of those puppies. A walk in. A walk in. Um, oh, boy. <clears throat> When you say ceramic sleeves, you're talking about the screws. No, Tim, I just showed the picture. It's a little sleeve that goes over top of the screw that keeps the screw from wearing against the link. Uh, let, let me explain the situation, okay? <clears throat> this is the problem with screws in a holding bracelet together. This is the whole issue, is the screw is stationary. It's fixed in place okay and then the the um the link pivots on it right like that and that's rubbing that's rubbing against the screw and what happens is the screw usually wears the link because the screw might be a little harder than the link itself in any event it causes wear and that's what causes the stretch in the bracelet. <clears throat> that's why the titanium Grand Seiko there that's on the bench, that's why it has pins and collars because the pin will float. It will rotate with the link. And so you get much less wear with the pin and collar setup than you do with a fixed screw. And this is what most so-called experts don't understand. Like when Tim dumps on a watch because it has pens and collars instead of a screw. Screw is not an upgrade from a pen and collar. It is a downgrade. Okay, that's why you have all those stretch issues in Rolex bracelets. It's because of the screws. All right, so the ceramic sleeve goes over the screw and it can free wheel it can rotate okay and it's against the link so now all of a sudden you've mitigated a lot of the wear that would normally be there it's just physics folks it's physics dura in the house craig can you please show us the technique you use with your polishing paste you polish it to the it looks like factory Okay, so it it turn it is not that difficult. I polished my um, I polished my uh, snowflake before I sold it. It had a couple of scratches. Okay, let me let me get the stuff that I use. Hold on a second here. Uh, put it on this. Hold on. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so it's called, literally called Super Premium Polishing Paste. It says professional too. <laughs> it's a super professional premium polishing paste. It's for polishing jewelry, right? So, and I, I, people are like, oh, that's going to scratch it and all this stuff. It works fine. You're just careful. Um, What's interesting about the scratches that get on the titanium is they're very much on the surface. They're not very deep because titanium, remember, the, the grade five titanium that Grand Seiko uses is really tough stuff. That's why they made that sub that I mentioned, that deep submersible. They made that out of titanium. Let me show you the uh, picture. Okay, hold on a second here. Um, let me go full screen. I'm going to show you some pictures here. All right, so 
uh, go here. Okay, so we got the micro strategy purchase there. So we'll use the arrows here. So this is the sub, okay? And that is the pressure hull. That is round. That is titanium. That's when they were pressure testing it. They had to take it to St. Petersburg, Russia to test it. That was the only place that had a big enough pressure testing facility to test this thing. Oops. So that it could go to the depths that it needs to go. That See, that's titanium. That's grade five titanium. That's the same thing that the watch that I just showed you is made of. Okay. This is no freaking joke. All right. If you want the strongest stuff, period, you go with grade five titanium. They didn't go with steel, which is what the Cameron one person sub was made of steel. This one, since it's a bigger sphere, they needed even more strength. And so they went with titanium, grade five titanium. It's more expensive than just doing it out of steel, but it's stronger. So then you can see how they milled it and all. They milled this thing. The sphere had to be within one tenth of a millimeter, I think, was the, was the tolerances. And again, I put the link to the uh, documentary about this. It's really fascinating. You should watch it. The precision they had to mill this thing to so that it was perfectly round because that is what makes it so durable as far as resisting the pressure from the deep ocean as being a sphere so that the pressure is evenly distributed all the way around, no weak spots. And it's about three and a half inches thick when it was finally finished. There it is coming out of the, um, when they actually formed it, they, um, it's not, it's not cast, it's um, forged, forged, right? It's the way to do it. See, they forged it. There it is coming out, still hot. Grade five titanium, my, my friends. This is no joke, okay? I'm not making this stuff up, all right? You guys think I'm making this stuff up? There's the sub once it's completed. And the, and the thing, the round thing is there in the middle. And all that other stuff around there is not pressurized. Okay, so, so there you go. Um, so to finish addressing your comment, Durr, <clears throat> because the scratches are very much on the surface, not very deep at all, it doesn't take much in the way of polishing. I used microfiber cloths and I used that polishing paste and I just carefully polished the places where there were scratches and it, it almost acts like an eraser. It, it takes them down and, and it, it makes them, it didn't, I didn't get them out completely. There's still some on the clasp that were a little bit deeper that I didn't get because here's the problem. Some of those things are brushed. So I didn't want to polish too much because I didn't want the brushed parts to be shiny. So I just kind of like brushed with the, the direction of the brushing just enough to get those surface scratches off, right? If you do it carefully, it works good. I mean, it worked for me. So, and again, I've done that. I did that on the, um, on the snowflake that I sold one of them and I did it on this watch. I've actually done it a couple times on this watch. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Can you please show us the technique you use? Okay. Um, let's see. Tell us about the 231 spring drive failure. It does the 230 to 231. This watch here, where is it? It's doing fine. It's doing just fine. Kyle's in the house. Kyle and Kevin always had the strongest hands. Durr is in the house. Rich was saying that a lot of spring drives were getting sent back to the factory because of some type of catastrophic fill, like a sub imploding. You know, I, I heard some rumors about that, but you generally speaking, the, the spring drives have been very robust. It, it's been a very low failure rate overall. So um, I don't know if some of the newer models are having more problems. You know, when you try new things, sometimes you run into problems. So I would go with the tried and true units, like the one on the screen right now. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, we need to get Rich in here for a call on that subject. I think he got an email. I think he's on the list. Fun fact, the gold bars are hollow inside, are hollow inside of the ceramic sleeves on the new day dates. The older model day dates have solid gold pins. Pins. You mean screws? Fun fact, the gold bars are hollow inside of the ceramic sleeves on the new day dates. Okay, so are you talking about the links that don't have screws? In other words, those that are permanently held together, that those bars or whatever they are in there, that those are hollow? I wouldn't think they'd have done that. That doesn't make sense. Oh, well. Um, screw links aren't a simple upgrade from pin and collar. They are like Jesus walking on water and turning water into wine. Yeah, but again, they cause the, the problems with the stretch the, that, you know, all Rolexes fall victim to eventually. Even steel ones get that stretch eventually if you wear them enough. Of course, most of these guys don't wear their watches, so it doesn't matter. If your watch is a box watch, then a lot of the things we talk about on this channel do not apply to you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about, for example, polishing your watch because it isn't going to get any scratches if it's sitting in the box. All right. <laughs> you're not going to have to worry about that. Um, you're not going to have to worry about stretch on your Rolex bracelet if you never wear it. It ain't going to stretch. I can promise you that. 100% guaranteed. If it's sitting in the box all the time, you don't have to worry about it. Um, okay, so we talked about the brushing. We talked about the polishing. Craig, please demonstrate on the 231 the proper polishing technique. <laughs> I've already done it. I don't need to de demonstrate. Um, Craig, do you apply the polish with the old secondhand toothbrush? No, I just used uh, microfiber cloths like this. Oh gosh. Bunch of stuff on top. Like this, just simple microfiber cloths. They work great. They work great. And you keep using different parts of them, right? You, you put a little bit of polish on, you polish, and then the cloth will get real black looking. And then you put a little bit of the polish on another piece of the cloth and you, you polish a little more. And same thing, it'll get black, and but it'll slowly erase those scratches. I don't know how well it works on stainless steel watches because those scratches in stainless steel watches will probably be deeper. So I'm not sure it will ha you'll have as good success. <clears throat> this is why sport watches should be titanium, not steel. Um, <clears throat> I heard that GS is the weak spot of the watch market. Look at the uh, 002. How stunning is that? Um, let's see here. LOL, the spring drive failed in the 231, and the watch went back to GS, who polished it. No, no, it's doing fine. Uh, Tim's in the house. The Titan sub, I guess, didn't have grade five titanium, only grade two. And look what happened. No, it was um, the problem there was, first of all, it was a tube. The pressure hall was a tube. It was not a round sphere. Right. So that's number one fail. Number two is the tube was made out of carbon fiber that it, that's not the way to go. <laughs> that's not what you want to do. It's cheaper. They saved money. See, here's the thing. They cut costs. They saved money. They were innovative, right? They had end caps on either end were made of titanium, but that center tube, that whole tube was made of wound carbon fiber. And that's a disaster waiting to happen. And it did happen. So, yeah, it's not the way to do it. It should have been a sphere, first of all, and it should have been made out of um, grade five titanium. 
they shouldn't have used the um they shouldn't use the carbon fiber wonder what the carbon fiber was what grade you can there's some documentaries that talk about what it was but that that lends itself to to failures so that's why a lot of people poo pooed that when they when they were talking about doing that a lot of experts said that that's not the way to do it but the guy was like i'm innovating oh he ain't innovating anymore um <laughs> it's a two through one the first watch that you've had a movement fail <laughs> And the 231 is doing just fine. Let's see. When are we bringing back Cowgirls Live? Can Bree ride horses and do some horse shows? Maybe with a Clyde still. <laughs> Durr, come on. Keep yourself under control. Uh, Kyle's in the house. Maybe Bree and Cowgirls Live can ride uh, so. Yeah, well, see, that's the problem is the trolls drove um, Cowgirls Live off the air. Uh, let's see. I heard the Titan sub was built by GS and held together with Pentagon. Here's the thing. Okay. This is the interesting thing. And the links are in the description. You can verify all this. The Challenger Deep, James Cameron's rig, that was made specifically for him, only one person, right? He went down to the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, the Challenger Deep, they call it, I guess. Anyway, he went down there and came back up. That all that whole thing was sponsored by Rolex, as you know, and there was a Rolex on one of the arms, and he showed it in the documentary that it was still running when he was down there at the bottom. Okay, fine. Then Omega was the sponsor on the um, limiting factor, deep submersible which again, link in the chat, in the, in the description. And that one was built to hold two people. That's the one I showed you the pictures of, this one here, okay? Um, this one was built to hold two people, okay? Sitting in it side by side. And so for that unit, they went with grade five titanium and they didn't cut any corners at all. That thing is well built. Okay. And Omega sponsored that. So what do you guys think about that? Omega took it to the next level. And in addition to that, he broke records because he dove to the deepest points of like, what are there like five oceans or something? Anyway, I don't know the names of all of them, Indian ocean, Pacific ocean, whatever. He dove to the deepest points in all of them, and he stayed down longer, gathered samples. I mean, he broke all the records, and that sub is still in operation. They're still using it over and over again, and the one that James Cameron made, it did a few dives, and it's, it was retired. Now, in its defense, there was a fire on a truck that was that was transporting it and it got damaged in the fire, but they, they didn't fix it and they didn't keep diving with it. So they retired it. And meanwhile, the one that Omega built is still operational and still being used for dives all over the place. And it's very robust and significantly better than the one that James Cameron made. Now the one that James Cameron made was nice. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't a piece of junk. Obviously it went to the, mariana trench but the one that this other guy made it's like stepping up from a, a submariner to um to that it's that kind of step up it's just taking everything to the next level so links are in the chat links are in the chat you guys need to check that out um any thoughts on the new blue color omegas? I haven't. I haven't really looked at them. Uh, if you're talking about blue dials or blue bezels, uh, let me know. I like blue. And then Rolex came over the top with DC DC challenge, deep sea challenge. No, what I was saying is the one that this other guy made 
it, it, he made it after Deep Sea Challenge. It was a major upgrade. Everything, everything upgraded across the board. Much more robust, able to be used over and over again without like a whole bunch of failures. The Deep Sea Challenge, if you look at the documentary that uh, James Cameron did, it had a lot of issues. It had a lot of issues. It's fascinating documentary. You got to check it out. But this other one, the um, limiting factor, they call it, it's a major step up. It's amazing. And it's the one that Omega did. So, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Don't shoot the messenger. Omega shit the bed on their anniversary watches. Okay. Omega pulled a GS and released some ugly. Yeah, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of ugly watches out there. I'll tell you that. Agree. The Omega watches are duds except for the. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to wrap it up because I'm starting to get hungry. When I get hungry, I could I could potentially get mean. And so remember. Sell those steel Rolexes, for God's sakes, if you still have a bunch of steel Rolexes in inventory. Get rid of them while you can. The market is getting soft. It's a bloodbath. And some people are really going to take a hit if they hold on to that inventory of, um, of steel Rolexes. Always have a gold stunner. Every gentleman has to have a gold stunner at all times. But you don't need a whole bunch of steel watches. You don't need that. Um, okay, Craig, when you lost all your Bitcoin in voting action, did it to implode close to the Titanic? Yes, my Bitcoin is all down next to the Titanic, unfortunately. So, yeah, Deep Sea Challenge is the Rolex that came out recently after the Omega Ultra Deep. It, it's made from Rolex and proprietary titanium i understand but the problem is the sub itself the deep sea challenger is subpar when compared to the limiting factor so research them do your own research check link is in the description folks to both documentaries they're worth watching you will enjoy it documentaries on on youtube all right, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, let's um, be careful with that two, three, one movement. It seems fragile. <laughs> hey, I don't know what they're all these rumors about um, spring drive issues, but I tell you, historically, all I've ever heard is that they're very robust. And I don't baby this puppy right here. I don't baby it one bit. And it's been fine. So uh, as always, your mileage may vary, but... Uh, do what you got to do. That's what I say. And it's one hour, 37 minutes live. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. And uh, hey, remember, uh, let's see. Where's my Bitcoin page? Go to um, craigship.com slash Bitcoin. craigship.com slash Bitcoin. And, uh, and check it out. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And we've got all kinds of information on that page about how you can secure your Bitcoin, how you can do the right thing, not get involved in a lot of scams, all those kinds of things. Um, let's see. Um, my girlfriend was also called Ultra Deep. <laughs> um, submersible was, was planned murder. Oh, well... <clears throat> Well, yeah, here, here's the thing. That guy thought that he could cut corners, he could save money. And when you're doing something like that, no, that's not the time to try to save money. I'll put it that way. All right, folks. Again, thanks for watching. Carry on all. Yeah, hopefully Carlos will make it for the next show. <laughs>